How's up, y'all? It's popping this D Bus Rex this video by Honest. This is Songs Jennifer Lopez shamelessly stole. <laughs> I cackled when I saw this title. Um, shout out to my patron Regis for requesting this vid. Um, so yeah, we're gonna see all the songs that J Lo stole. Um, yeah, you know, she had to get it how she could. <laughs> she said, I'm about to be a star, you know, by any means necessary. So let's hear about all these songs she stole as well. For most people, especially fans of the late Selena and Hispanic people looking for representation, Jennifer Lopez is seen as a goddess, a jack of all trades who bounces from dancing to acting to singing effortlessly. But for others, particularly fans of JLo's rival, Mariah Carey, Jenny is a fraud whose entire success has come from ripping off other artists and dirty business tactics. Of course, neither of these sides are accurate, and the truth lies somewhere between both of them. But one thing that's for sure is that JLo owes a huge portion of her singing career to a long list of female vocalists who picked up slack for her on multiple occasions. Really? Over the course of her career, and particularly no before 2007's Brave album, Jenny has had a habit of borrowing vocals from other female artists to pass off as her own. Mm -hmm. The trend started with her first ever single, and generally consisted of other females singing the choruses of her songs without any credit as a featured artist. Oh, what makes Jenny's situation notable is not just how common of a practice this was for her, but also how many people were willing to turn a blind eye to it for the sake of her career. Mm. Jenny would lip sync to these vocals in music videos and on stage, and no one would bat an eyelash. Even in cases where the vocals were clearly not hers, we can't help but wonder if the songs would have been even more successful if someone else were singing them. Number one, Play, stolen from Christina Milian. Play was the second single from 2000's J-Lo, following the huge success of Love Don't Cost a Thing, and it was popular yeah. enough to hit top 10 in 11 countries worldwide. Right. However, what most people probably didn't notice when they were telling the DJ to play their favorite song is that half of the song wasn't even sung by Jennifer at all. Ooh. Play was co-written by Christina Milian, who will later go on to have a number five hit with Dip It Low. Her vocals are heard all over the finished version of the Can track. Do this Most prominently like this? in the chorus, where JLo doesn't sing a single note. Oh. Given that Christina helped write the song, we guess that she also demoed it to shop around to artists like JLo. And that for some reason, perhaps time constraints, or perhaps just because they prefer Christina's vocals, producers made the choice to keep her voice on the track. Oh, Christina does get credited for background vocals on the track, okay, but okay. given that she sings the most memorable part, you'd think she'd at least be worth a feature. Mm. Number two, I'm Real, stolen um. from Shailene Thomas. Mm -hmm. I'm Real was so popular that it was actually released as a single twice, albeit in very different forms. It was released as the first single from J-Lo in typical bubblegum pop style. And the version of the song Simple Firecracker by Yellow Magic Bowler. Orchestra and what was later revealed to be a diss towards J-Lo's ongoing rival Mariah Carey. Firecracker had never been sampled before 2001. When Mariah made an attempt to license a sample of it for her song Loverboy, out of spite, Carey's former husband and executive at J-Lo's label, Tommy Mottola, applied for the same license and beat her to the punch by releasing it on I'm Real. Mm. First, ruining the sample for Carrie and contributing to the poor success of her Glitter album. Oh. Once again, JLo apparently couldn't find time in her schedule to lay down vocals <laughs> for the I'm Real chorus. Instead, Shailene Thomas's vocals took their place, possibly appropriated from the demo. No wonder Mariah claims not to know her. Mm. Number three, I'm Real, Murder Remakes featuring Ja Rule, stolen from Ashanti. Later, in an attempt to appeal to a more urban market and give her album a boost on the charts, Jennifer's team remixed I'm Real with Ja Rule, this version being released as a single from J to the L of the remixes. Despite being marketed as a remix, this version of the song bears barely any resemblance to the original I'm Real. The majority was rewritten by R&B star Ashanti, who will later become famous for her features on Fat Joe's What's Love and Ja Rule's Always On Time. For this version of the song, the Firecracker sample was also removed and replaced with samples of All Night Long by Mary Jane Girls and Mary Jane by Rick James, possibly to suit the more urban vibe of the song. Ashanti's demo vocals were kept for the song's final mix, with the R&B singer yes, taking over the chorus duties and recording ad-libs over Jar Rule's verses. Really though, although she received credit for background vocals, Ashanti never received a co-writer's credit on the track. 
Jenny singing Ashanti's lyrics will later become controversial when the media picked up on her using the word nigga. Quoted saying, I tell them niggas mind they biz, but they don't hear me that though. Was Angry fans even protested one of her <laughs> New York concerts with banners, forcing responses from JLo and Ja Rule. Number four, Jenny from the block. Stolen from Natasha Ramos. Jenny from the block is such a trademark JLo song that it is hard to think of anyone else singing it. But believe it or not, someone else actually has been the entire time. What? Jenny from the Block was released as the first single from This Is Me. Then in 2002, featuring rappers Jada Kiss and Styles P. And yet again, the chorus was sung by someone other than herself. This time, it was Natasha Ramos, whose voice was appropriated for the song. After she demoed the track that was especially written for Lopez, Ramos' voice is actually quite similar to Jenny's. And we probably wouldn't have noticed if the demo from Jenny from the Block hadn't leaked. Featuring some of the exact same vocals that popped up in the final song, Ramos sings the entire chorus and bridge of the track, which makes us wonder if we've been all fooled by Jenny's rocks after all. Mm. Number 5, mm. Ride or Die, stolen from Brandy. Oh. Ride or Die is an album track from Jen's fourth album, Rebirth, written by the boy's mind singer, Brandy. The song was originally intended for Brandy's album, but when that suffered from multiple delays, it was passed on to Jennifer's project instead. Once again, it seems as if though Jen didn't have time to record vocals for the <laughs> full song, because Brandy can still be heard in the chorus, as well as in the backing vocals She had time! She didn't want version to! Of featuring rapper Posta Boy will later go on to leak, and a quick listen will prove that certain portions of the vocals are completely identical. <laughs> Number six, Ain't It Funny, Murder Remix, Christian wow, Jarrell, and Cadillac her big Tongue, stolen from Ashanti. After the Umbrella <laughs> Remix topped the Hot 100 for several weeks, J-Lo's label requested like another hip-hop remix this from Ja Rule. This time, they needed a verse for Ain't It Funny Remix, which in reality had no connection to the original song other than by the name. And Ashanti returned once again to write brand new lyrics over an entirely different beat. Mm. This in itself was controversial, as music critics criticized Jail's label for attempting to allow two completely separate songs to chart as one and be pushed up the charts unfairly. It would eventually force Billboard to change their policy regarding remixes so that only songs which sound similar to each other can chart together. It should come as no surprise that Shanti once again sings the entire chorus mm -hmm. along with ad-libs. She even cameos in the music video for the song as a guest at JLo's party. Ashanti puts on a happy face in the video, but we can't imagine she was all too happy with the situation in real life. Mm -hmm. Number 7, All I Have featuring LL Cool J, stolen from Deborah Laws and Makiba Riddick. All I Have is the second single from This Is Me Then, and was an even bigger hit than Jenny from the Block. But like most JLo songs of that era, All I Have wasn't without controversy. Most of the chorus All I Have is based around a vocal sample of Deborah Law's Very Special, a 1981 single which hit number 31 back when it was released. Yeah, Although it was Sonny way better. That's why I didn't really like the writers of the song to sample its chorus, its singer was unaware of this and ended up Ooh. taking JLo to court over it. This lawsuit was so ultimately hard. dismissed twice. When it's not Deborah Laws or LL Cool J singing on All I Have, the fun. voice you hear most prominently, especially in the chorus, is that of Makiba Riddick, a Rock Nation signee who's written songs such as Rihanna's Unfaithful, Beyonce's Deja Vu, and Eminem's Love the Way You Lie. To be honest, after Laws, Coolio, and Makiba all have their way with the song, Jenny ends up barely contributing enough vocals to be a featured artist on her own track. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Girl. Girl. Stolen from Georgette Franklin. <laughs> Love Don't Cost a Thing. These are all her big songs, bro. And Mark Jenny's official transition into a sex symbol, purportedly about the singer's ongoing relationship with Diddy and the gifts he had incessantly bought her. The song was allegedly later a reason for their split. Just several months after the single's release and her breakup from Diddy, Jenny will go on to marry one of the music video backup dancers, Chris Judd, who she was allegedly having an affair with during the Diddy relationship. Yet again, there's no background singer listed for love, so it is a little hard to say whose vocals could be all over that chorus. However, we would guess that they belong to Georgia Franklin, one of the song's writers who very possibly could have recorded demo vocals for the track in its early I'm glad. Stolen from Natasha Ramos. I'm Glad mm -hmm. is the third single from 2003's oh, good This Is video, Me Then, and is one of the least successful singles from the album, peaking only at number 32 on the US charts. Once again, the music video for the song proved controversial and made JLo once again the subject to a lawsuit, a homage to the classic musical film, Flashdance. 
The music video features Lopez recreating the iconic dance audition scene from the end of the film, along with the matching choreography. Paramount Pictures ultimately sued Sony for copyright infringement, a suit which was settled out of court. But Maureen Martyr, the dancer whose life inspired Flashdance, sued both Lopez and Sony for the same thing in 2003. In 2006, all of her claims were dismissed. Natasha Ramos sustained backup on almost all of This Is Me Then album, once again contributes her vocals to the chorus, this time around. Although to be fair to Jenny, she can be heard peeking through once or twice in the hook. Number 10, I'm Going To Be Alright remix, featuring Nas and Trackmasters, stolen from Lorraine Cheryl Cook. I'm Going To Be Alright originally appeared on the J-Lo album before being released for the J to the L-O, the remixes. Being released as the album's second single, when it was first released for the album, really the remix to... featured 50 Cent, but before sending it to radio, Apple Records replaced him with Nas, shit. leading to a long-standing feud done. between the two rappers. The first thing that started things a little off with him was the Jennifer Lopez that 50 would later go on to say. There's no one listed as a background vocalist for I'm Gonna Be Alright, which is confusing since the vocals during the chorus definitely aren't J-Lo's. If we're honest, the vocals sound like a lot something Michael Jackson will put out. But it's a lot more likely that Lorraine Cheryl Cook, a listed writer in the song, is the voice behind the chorus. Hadad. Get Right is the lead single for Rebirth, and so it made sense for the song to revolutionize Jenny's sound courtesy of producer Rich Harrison, who wrote the song along with Usher. Get Right was originally demoed as Ride for Usher's 2004 album Confessions. After it failed to make the cut on that album, Harrison gave it to Lopez, as an apology for giving another track, one thing, to Amiri, instead of her. This was all done apparently without the permission of Usher, who gave the ultimatum, I better get some of that publishing rights or else. Mm. Once again, JLo isn't too prominent on the chorus of Get Right, with most of the vocals apparently being handled by the background singer, Miss Haddad. To be fair though, the production here is quite nicely harmonized, so it's entirely possible that JLo does have a line of vocals in there somewhere. We're just not hearing it. <laughs> With artists such as J.Lo, who is held as a legend committing acts such as these, it makes you wonder what other of our favorite artists have seemingly got away with the same exact thing. I guess we'll just have to keep our ears peeled. What song shocked you the most? And legend is, um, I, I don't know about that, but you know, sure, I'm not that deep into the music business and people's numbers and shit like that, so I don't know, but maybe she's considered a legend to some people. Um, yeah, these are all her big songs. They all <laughs> were stolen to some degree. That is crazy. But you know what? I am not too surprised because I remember thinking that too on a couple of those songs. I'm like, this is like Ashanti. Like, is Ashanti featured on this? But you know, it doesn't say she is. This is kind of odd. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But this also sheds some light on, you know, Mariah Carey and Jennifer Lopez B. You know, it, it probably started from all this bullshit back in the day. And then, you know, it just never got resolved and it probably got worse and worse over time. So this is making sense why Mariah Carey saying she don't know her <laughs> and she be shading her. It, it's coming together. This is an entertaining video, though. Y'all let me know what y'all thought. Let me know what other videos you're going to react to. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.